Hey what's going on guys and welcome to your fifth Bootstrap 4 tutorial and in this video I want to talk about the basics of the Bootstrap grid system. Okay so the Bootstrap grid system has had a significant upgrade since the last version and now makes use of Flexbox. But we're going to get onto all that later. First of all I just want to bring you up to speed on the basics of the grid system. So the grid is split up into rows going across and then columns going up and down. And the number of columns is 12, so we're restricted to 12 columns, but the number of rows can be as many as you like on your web page. So the idea is that this is content in different rows on your web page going down the page. Okay? So for example, we could have a row on our web page which is made up of two elements, for example, a picture on the left and text on the right. Or it could be two pictures or two blocks of text. And we want to say to Bootstrap, look, we want each of these to be six columns in width. So Bootstrap then splits these up into equal segments on the grid. This is six columns. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. And so is this one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're saying to Bootstrap, we want each element to be six columns in width. Or we could have three elements in a row. And we want to say each of these elements takes up a width of four columns. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, etc. Or we could just have one element which takes up 12 columns in width all the way across. And there's loads of different combinations. You could have one with two columns and then the rest is 10 columns, etc. They don't always have to be equal like this. So that's the premise. But how does this all work? Well, with Bootstrap, we can just apply classes that Bootstrap gives us to say how many columns we want a particular element to take up. And we can also say at what device width we want them to take up that space. So we're going to take a look now at a few simple examples. OK, so I'm back in the template file and all I've done is add in a div with a class of container. So remember, when I was talking about containers, I said that they are the surrounding element of all our content. And when we use the grid system, we have to put our rows inside a container. That is one of the constraints of the grid system. So that's why I've done this. So the next thing I want to do is create a row of content on our page. And the way we do that is by creating an element with a class of row. I'm just going to use a div, but you don't have to. I'm going to say div class equals row. So Bootstrap now knows that this is going to be a row on our grid. OK, and we can place elements within inside this row. So I want to place two elements in here. Again, I'm just going to use divs, but you can use whatever you want. I'm going to say class equals we're going to leave that blank for now and just close off the div and copy this again and paste it underneath. So now we have two elements inside this row. Now I want each element to take up six columns in width from the small screen sizes upwards. OK, so how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do when applying column widths to elements is say col for the class. OK, then we provide options. We say at what screen size do you want to apply this? I'm going to say small screen sizes, which is SM. Then I want to say how many columns of width I want this element to be. I said six, so hyphen six. And that's all there is to it. And what this says is that, OK, I want at small screen sizes and upwards. Remember, Bootstrap is mobile approach first. So this is small screen sizes and upwards. I want this to be six columns in width. And we're going to do exactly the same for this one down here. And then we'll do the same in the actual element so we can see the text on the screen. And if I save this now and take a look in a browser, you can see that the col SM6 over there is on the left side of the grid and this one is on the right side of the grid. And each one occupies six columns in width. Now that's quite hard to tell because it's just text. There's no borders around each element or anything like that. So let's add just a couple of styles to make this easier to see. Now I'm just going to add a style tag or a style attribute rather right here. This is not great practice, so I don't advise you do this, but I'm just doing it so it's quick and easy. So I'm going to say background is going to be light blue, just so we can see it. And then I'm also going to add styles for these things right here. I'm not going to do them in line because we're going to have loads of different columns or elements that take up columns. So I'm going to just do one global rule in this style block right here in the head. So I'm going to say row, which is this thing right here, then div which is going to target these things right here then i'm going to say they are going to have a padding of 20 pixels top and bottom 10 pixels left and right and a border which is one pixel thick and then solid all the way around so we do have bootstrap utility classes that we can do this kind of stuff with but because i've not covered that i'm just using 
these styles here. Okay, so now we can see them easier on the screen. So this is a small screen size and it's six columns in width. And I said that Bootstrap is mobile first, so this means that this thing applies six columns of width for small, squeezes, uh, small screen sizes and upwards. So if we make this bigger, they're always gonna be six columns in width. And yeah, the elements are getting bigger, but it's just because the screen's getting bigger, okay? They're still half and half, 50%, six columns each. So this is the case for all screen sizes from small and upwards. But once we get to the extra small screen size, they revert and stack on top of each other. That is kind of the responsive nature of the bootstrap grid, which is really cool, okay? So they're gonna stack for kind of like mobile devices. So that is this class. What if I change this to medium screen sizes? If I say MD, which stands for medium. Well, let's take a look. I'll save that now. And if we take a look over here, now you can see on small screen sizes, no longer are they left to right. They're now stacked on top of each other. And that's because I've said that I only want this up to apply from medium screen sizes upwards. Make sense? So as soon as we get to a medium screen size, this is gonna split up into the columns like so. Awesome. So let's do a few more examples now. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it down below. And this time what we'll do is give this row a background color of pink so we can distinguish it from the other one. Um, I'm also going to create four elements inside this. And this time, instead of six columns in width, I want them each to be on large screens, three columns in width. OK, so it's fine for medium screens. But when we get to large screens, we'll say three columns in width. So we'll say call LG for large and then three. OK, so we're just adding on another class here. So I'm going to copy this and paste it down here a couple of times. And then I'm also going to paste it in the text as well so we can see what's going on. And once we've done that, I just want to save it. And let's view this in a browser. OK, so this time we're still getting them stacked up for small screens because we've said we only want to apply this from medium screens and upwards. And if we make this larger, as soon as it gets to a medium sized screen, they're taking up six columns in width. Now, because the grid is only 12 columns wide and each of these are six columns in width, then we have four elements like this stacked on top of each other and also left to right because we can't have four going across because that would make up 24 columns. So the first two make up the first 12 columns and then the next two make up the second 12 columns. So they're stacked on top like that. Makes sense. But as soon as we get to large screens, we say we want them to be three columns in width. So they should all be left to right. So let's go to a large screen. And there we go, three columns in width, four elements. So let's do one more example. So I'm gonna copy this thing again and paste it down here. This time I'm gonna give this a background color of yellow. And then again, I want four elements like so. This time, let's just bring them back to call. So we've not added any options on yet. We've not told Bootstrap what we wanna do. And again, I'm going to delete this text inside here as well. And this time, what I want to do is show you what happens when we don't specify any sizes like small or medium, etc. OK, so imagine I just want this to be, I don't know, three columns in width for all screen devices. Well, I can just say call three, call three, call three, call three. And if I copy and paste this and just add them in the text, and save it, view it in a browser, then for every screen size, this is gonna be three columns in width. And that's because we didn't specify which device we wanted it to be for. And even on extra small screens right here where they normally stack, they're still three columns in width, okay? So that is the bootstrap grid system. And the idea is that you put different content in each one of these elements right here, such as images, or text, etc. It's up to you. But that is the basics of the Bootstrap grid system. In the next video, what we're going to do is take this one step further and take a look at some of the new flex properties of this grid system.